gives me great pleasure to be here to discuss on uh, Industry 4.0. It is a most appropriate time and the two in the manufacturing hub of uh, India, that is in Chennai. And um, if at all anybody need to uh, practice this Industry 4.0, it would be more appropriate that the Chennaiites would have practiced it much more efficiently than the rest of the countries. That's what uh, I feel. I take it also in that particular way. And in our panel, we have got the very, very distinguished persons and uh, different industries. Uh, one is from the chemical industry and another is from the FMCG industry. And we also have Mr. Govindarajan who is, can uh, supplement on uh, what uh, IBM can uh, take on on this. I would like to just start with by giving certain preamble. Actually, this uh, Industry 4.0, uh, it is revolutionizing and uh, bringing certain disruptive uh, platform to the manufacturing, actually. Uh, in the sense that uh, we can categorize it into two or three aspects. The first aspect is that um, the IoT, uh, the Internet of Things or Internet of Everything, which is happening which is uh, basically to improve the productivity within the manufacturing shop and bring certain traceability and also uh, improve the compliance. And the productivity, traceability, improving the compliance, thereby it increases the quality also. That is also very, very important. That is one aspect of it. The second aspect of it is the environment, uh, health and safety, where that uh, the things can be monitored remotely and it can be controlled uh, such that you know that uh, we are also complained uh, on the environment, health and safety. The third aspect of it is the connected vehicles and connected devices. And we hear more on automobiles on uh, the connected vehicles, how it uh, helps and uh, how it brings new uh, stream of things. And uh, even the driverless car and also servicing it remotely and knowing about the performance of the vehicle on the road. All those things are all uh, discussed uh, in this industry 4.0. The other aspect of it is that additive manufacturing, which IBM very clearly uh, spoke about that one in the first speaker spoke about that. So it is going to also revolutionize the way in which the spare parts management is uh, uh, going to happen in future. Uh, in the sense that we would have heard about the caterpillar stories and other things, you know, where uh, any part of the globe, there will be a portion to service the parts within two days, okay? Any, any type of vehicle which Caterpillar has uh, manufactured, that is their uh, strength. Uh, in the sense that even if you have the vehicle uh, or the device which is manufactured in 1940s and 1950s, they will supply you the parts within two days. But with the additive manufacturing, whether the two days can be reduced to two hours or it can be reduced to two minutes. That's the challenge and that is how the industry 4.0 can revolutionize. So like that, we can hear uh, many stories. And I would like to take on uh, from the two practitioners of uh, industry uh, 4.0, uh, one with uh, uh, Sindhil uh, Kevin Kerr. And um, what is that you have understood by way of industry 4.0, how you are practicing it? And you can briefly tell us about this. Yeah, no. I'm Sandil Anand from Kevin Care Private Limited. Uh, we manufacture you know, uh, uh, shampoos and then you no know, dairy products, and then we manufacture uh, you know, beverages. All those things you know, we manufacture and uh, distribute and uh, sell it you know, all over India. That is the background of it. And uh, uh, second thing is, you know, recently I had exposure to uh, the textile industry also, like, you know, uh, from uh, cotton to end uh, on apparel manufacturing. That is a another manufacturing which, uh, you know, we do. And we do also uh, manufacture cakes, you know, which is uh, coming under brand of, you know, Zikki's Bakery. That is, you know, in Chennai, you know, around 60, uh, 70 outlets are there. And uh, another brand, you know, which we have is the Green Trends and Limelight. That is a, you know, beauty salon brand. It's, uh, that is a parlor type of thing. That is a so uh, what I understand is the you know, entire thing. It's a, it can, can be operational in terms of manufacturing or in terms of you no know, technical in terms of you no know, uh, systems. It's like you no know, three type of things are there. One is uh, systems of record. That is one. Second thing is the next level would be uh, systems of you no know, differentiation. Like you no, know, it may be operational. It may be a system point of view. And the third one is the systems of innovation. 
if you see i can quote no couple of examples i'll take your time sir like no uh, one is you uh, know in terms of uh, uh, systems of record like no uh, like taking data from machine directly and bringing into your production uh, you know directly integrating with your erp system it you no know, uh, provides a system of record as well the operational efficiency in terms of you no know, which machine how much it's getting produced what and all you no know, defects are coming in and due to uh, machine or due to raw material all those things you no know, directly you get into no so for an example i'll tell you in our milk uh, thing every milk packet uh, it should uh, it's costing half a liter packet you no know, it could contain exactly 500 grams if you see uh, over a period of time when we observe we are using a flow meter for the 500 grams you no know. uh, due to flow meter you know, faultiness uh, it's going into 515 or no 520 like that you no know, it was going on there you now we put in sensor uh, that's you not know, to measure in terms of you no know, weight how much and then if sensor you no know, if, if it uh, like you no know, if it is 490 between and quite time if it crosses or it goes below automatically machine stops no this has uh, bring in lot of no uh, uh, improvement in our uh, uh, no excess uh, going into the consumer that is the one thing no innovation i will not say innovation it's a system of differentiation in terms of operational efficiency it has brought in actually uh, second such thing no i can tell you in the uh, forever cream that is our brand where no tubes going without filling that also uh, you know it's a weight sensor no based on that no we have put in and then no tubes without uh, particular grammage no going in that has been avoided like uh, in the past no that could not have been possible without sensors and other uh, related things in the yarn manufacturing what i have seen is no uh, right from your cotton they call it as a ginning when you segregate the cotton seeds from the uh, cotton and then they go into for a mixing of you no know, your uh, man made fiber and your uh, cotton when they mix it it has to go into a particular ratio all this you no know, uh, manufacturing is done for the export uh, there are stringent quality measures are there and lot of variants also involved and also quality if you uh, quantity if you see is very less quantity like you no know, it will be in terms of you no know, uh, few hundred uh, units that is how you no know, the exports are happening actually uh, uh, based on the brand requirements like and uh, uh, all these things no if we don't meet the quality standard it gets automatically rejected also all these things no if you see if you involve human there is lot of like no in the entire in the finished apparel if you if you see a dots and other thing no it's a quality defect like and uh, when you no make, make from the cotton next stage would be yarn at that stage no uh, entire thing like no uh, p- people are talking about the imaging and also familiarizing the uh, machine to check automatically and disconnect and then no uh, connect and no it happens no in a milliseconds like no uh, it has been familiarized if it is the thickness is there and then it uh, you know automatically it detects and then no it goes into all these things you know what i talk about is of uh, systems of differentiation in terms of uh, operational excellence that is the you know contextually i'm talking about the third level it's a system of uh, innovation uh, bringing in new models of you know business like if you see uh, you know many uh, things you know they have quoted like you no know, system integrators like you no know, your wala type of thing you no know, all those things you no know, that comes in the innovation where you no know, we create a new business models and then that is a with that maybe i'll come back no uh, on the second round no? yeah. very good experience actually that uh, being the fmcg industry you know customer satisfaction is very very important you have to ensure that um, taste is there in the forever forever no forever whether it is adding to the beauty or not but what is <laughs> required is definitely that taste should be there and another important thing is that uh, even if you uh, supply some extra milk but it should not be under milk okay if it is 500 grams 480 grams it should not be there people will go to the consumer court that's very very important even uh, every 15 grams more is going to bring you loss but that is also not desirable from the management point of view but it should not be lesser if it is lesser you get into many more uh, problem okay therefore basically we have seen what we have seen here is that uh, how the iot and it system is playing a role in controlling the quality meeting the customer requirements and enhancing the customer satisfaction so let us listen to the guy sendil too 
I'll call you Sandal too, like uh, Industry 4.0. He is more on B2B. Let's listen to him. Yeah. So Sandal, Sandal, yeah. Dandapani, we are yeah, here. I, okay. I am Sandal Kumar. Yes, Sandal Kumar. There is some differences there. <laughs> Sandal Nadan, uh -huh. Sandal Kumar. Okay. So good evening to all. And uh, first of all, I thank to uh, CMR and uh, IBM. This gave this opportunity to come and sit in front of you. Uh, so our company is Aspirant Global Chem Limited, which is uh, started 1979. With uh, you heard maybe the silica, maybe in all the field there's uh, some basic material they're using. Actually, you even in the younger stage, maybe you studied uh, it's a silica ware from this from the sand. You are manufacturing that silica from that using of sand raw material. So this sili uh, silica we are pr uh, converting as a sodium silicate and potassium silicate. This is a basic material for the all the industries. We uh, take it any so cosmetic and um, soap in industry and uh, whatever it is, maybe tire industry, almost all metros. So we are in global, we are the second largest manufacturer. And in India, we are the first largest manufacturer of sodium silicate. So this is our uh, starting period and as we came across the various uh, technology uh, implementation and at the same time many problems also we faced. Uh, three, four years back we started a one plant called that is a precipitated silica in Kadalu. That is we want to do that is entirely to be a systematic. I don't want to uh, any semi automated like that. So in that from the uh, day first, we are very keen on that. So what we did from the structure is from, for any organization, actually the structure first come, and second is the process, and third one technology, and fourth one is the end user, so how this structure is. So we started that planning of like that uh, structure, we have to study it, internal systems. So how this department inside that, because here is a major role is IT uh, transformation, at the same time digital transformation also combined is there. And uh, then we came to know this, actually we, there is a two department. One is uh, IT and another one is operation is a separate, separate department. So in one stage, we mingled these two department as a one. Then after that, higher authority is the one guy separately we fixed it. So after that, next, next department is supporting to the this major department. So by combining of these two department, operation and IT, uh, some contradictions we avoided totally. Because the early, early, these two departments, they will say one thing, this guy will say. So there is some always uh, gap. So we made it a normal way in that, and uh, we came to solution oriented. So in that same scenario, <coughs> we worked out for that and brought some output from them. Then after that, we gone for the all automation like PLC and implemented the SCADA. Maybe everybody is aware about that. So after that, slowly we want to go for the, this to be a industry four. So that is industry four version. With this, uh, this data is because our plants is uh, situated in uh, Pan India 32 location. And globally we have the six countries. So how we have to make it linked like that? So in that uh, defaultly this internet is major role. Um, so using that technology, we are collected all the information to do, displaying one dashboard to get the, some analysis where we can able to sort it out. So, so analyst, we, s we analyzed and all the people, we will sit in the carpet and we will do every day process what is the things in each plant, everything is what is going on. So this analysis report help us. So how to rectify the issues at the same time. So how the control, where, where is the loss, where is this uh, depreciation is happening, everything we take in the data. So after comparison, now we are slowly moving to the next level. So it's almost, you see this, during this uh, maybe five or six years, last five or six years, our uh, maybe the depreciation part is there sometime, but is wastages, some percentage we reduced, and uh, manpower, unutilized manpower, that is uh, systematically organized. At the same time, the data we collected that data is very valuable to us. So we are evaluating for each and every process 
at the same time this process is comparing to the other plant also so this is very helpful to us so this is the so not only we are keeping idle there we are we are taking up next level also yeah. so this is the system we are handling that so i hope so maybe something you cleared about these things so Very any much. questions in that you can <laughs> ask you can i can ready to reply for that oh, wonderful actually what he has brought is about 5 uh, 6 years back we were talking about uh, aligning it strategy with the business strategy but uh, no more it is talk like this he is talking about that uh, the operations and also it sitting together and uh, bringing out the solution that is also very very important see you you don't solve the problem you give the solution such that you know such a problem will never arise in the future and also give the platform for any future problem that arises that's uh, very very interesting and the ibm was also talking about that uh, zero icing the distance between multiple factories that's what also they are uh, they have taken the initiative in the sense that uh, 36 factories will be connected and you will be collecting that information and uh, collecting the data and uh, do the analysis at the central head big data and data analytics is uh, very very important in uh, industry 4.0 because the in my opinion the real roi is on the data analytics what we are doing it see that uh, normally you know roi for accountants it is adequate that if you get about 15 16% return or if it matches their internal rate of return it is adequate but if you want to get some breakthrough benefits that the breakthrough benefits will get only out of data analytics therefore uh, the insights what you are going to get out of the data how it is going to redefine the design and uh, uh, other things and uh, how one of the topics they were also ta talking that the patent knowledge the all 50 60 years uh, 40 50 years old operators they have got lot of knowledge from the sound of the motor they will say that uh, whether the motor is functioning all right or not how such a knowledge is going to be digitized and it is going to be passed on to the younger generation because the manufacturing industry is already about 50 60 years old means most of the employees will be about 40 50 years old and they are all due for retirement so their knowledge need to be bequeathed to the new younger generation that is where that uh, the data collected through iot will be helpful and uh, analytics will be very very helpful so we have seen uh, multiple industries manufacturing and uh, manufacturing if you look at it it has got uh, much more also in terms of process industries in terms of assembly in terms of machining in terms of die casting like that but the providing solution for all this industry though we call it as a manufacturing it is very very important how ibm is bringing the common standards such that you know one set of solution will be suitable for rest of the people that's what we are going to hear from mr govin Thanks for the opportunity uh, to be with the clients on this panel as well as uh, talking to a few clients on uh, that side. Uh, interesting topic in terms of uh, uh, two things coming together in with that you mentioned, uh, IT and business, and taking it forward to analytics. Uh, in the platform that, uh, that was talked about, IoT platform, which I will extend to what's an IoT platform. The IoT platform is the layer which helps the IT team to connect all the devices to a layer, industry standard layer. And then what IBM has done is put a lot of analytics layer on top of that and has also built solutions above that so that it can you can quickly uh, get the return. But more importantly on the analytics part, um, I think it was discussed earlier as well as in uh, during this panel also, during these uh, presentations also, there are lots and lots of open source that is available, which makes, uh, you know, the, which lowers the investment cost, but at the same time throws out, throws a lot of options to you as end users. So IBM has simplified in that layer also, in, an, uh, in our IoT layer, we have provided m most of those interesting open source is available as part of our cloud offering in the IoT. And to add to that, uh, the other point that you uh, raised in terms of how do we retain the intelligence of the senior people in the organization, that's where Watson IoT platform, that's again our uh, offering. Watson is our engine for, uh, you call it uh, AI or uh, machine learning or deep learning. IBM's 
IP is that Watson and what we have brought about is that that knowledge or those APIs are also part of the cloud offering. So as IT people, as IT layer, you have seamless connection to this platform. You have seamless connection to the analytics that is available on the platform. And on top of that, you can bring in your own knowledge or your own IP into that Watson platform and use that machine learning for your uh, IoT. So these are the things that we have brought about. And again, going back to the previous topic that you mentioned in terms of bringing the IT and business together, that's where the business consulting comes into picture. We are able to bring together the IT knowledge as well as the business knowledge. We conduct workshops, we conduct design thinking. The moment you have a, an idea, a small idea, we, we are there to handhold you, to take that idea, build on top of that idea, make it relevant for the business, and then build on top of that idea very quickly and show those uh, you know, quick wins to your businesses. That's where we come in. Thank you, thank you. Um, one more thing, interesting thing, what we observe in this Industry 4.0 is about um, the role of the IT. The role of the IT, if you look at it, uh, prior to, uh, in 70s and 80s, if you look at it, uh, they will be doing only data processing and uh, developing certain reports for inventory and the payroll, month end uh, processing they used to do. They used to sit in a corner of the uh, factory or the office and uh, predominantly only the accountants and uh, some inventory people, that uh, stores people will be interacting with them. Then came ERP, you know, that uh, uh, IT people started interacting with uh, uh, marketing people, sales people, stores people, production people, quality people, and all other people, they started uh, doing it because everybody was doing planning and they have to, ERP is something, you know, enterprise resource planning that they have to integrate with them and they started rubbing shoulders with all uh, CXOs. When Industry 4.0 came, the IT people, they are not allowed to sit in their data center. They are asked to go to the shop floor. The way in which uh, both the Sindhil Nathans, uh, Sindhil Kumar and Nathan, they have explained, you can see that uh, they explain the business process. The way in which they conduct the business, the way in which the manufacturing is happening. And if there is any problem, they have to also attend to that one. That is the era by which, you know, uh, the IT people come to know about, uh, not only about marketing, not only about production, not only about quality, they also know intricacies of manufacturing. They started even greasing their palms and they have to be in the shop floor and if the production stops, you know, nobody is going to wait for, uh, uh, will not leave the IT guys, okay? And that sort of importance, the role of IT people have also enhanced and they're getting enriched day after day. That's how it is going. How do you see this responsibility? Is it a pain or a pleasure? Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's real uh, pleasure, I should say, because uh, no, uh, only data processing, that is basically a systems of record. They have not heard a pleasure or pressure, that's what it's they are asking. It's a pleasure. Okay. I know, I again reiterating, it's a pleasure. <laughs> Because it's like, you no know, mundane looking at the monitor and only, you know, processing data and giving, you no know, output, uh, all those things, you no know, writing, coding, all those things, you no, know, a certain point of time becomes uh, boring. After, you no know, 30, 35 years, you know, if you look at, look back, what is that you have done, you know, you really do not know. I can take, with one example, I'll uh, explain. Uh, we have some uh, 62 outlets in Chennai, CK's Bakery. So one point of time, no, uh, uh, the person who is running want to see, like, okay, whether are they following, uh, no, uh, uh, what all process we said in the all outlets. This is his uh, problem statement. Because uh, always, no, all food products, no, goes with the freshness and also the people who are, no, serving. These two things makes a lot of difference. That is where, no, we play a great role. And uh, marketing also lies in that, actually. And uh, uh, this is a business problem. Uh, the real solution is uh, like, uh, you know, we want to have an online monitoring of uh, 60 outlets. Uh, when the problem was addressed to us, really, you know, we saw uh, there is no online real-time monitoring can happen actually. But in industry, for all ATMs, uh, you know, today, it's being monitored online. Like, you know, with sensors, somebody gets into and somebody, uh, you know, uh, breaks the ATM, 
it's getting online monitor. We, you know, in Mumbai, one of the agencies, you know, by name Securance, they are, you know, doing this service. We approach them. What uh, solution they gave is, you give us day end, uh, what is that, you know, you want to monitor. We want to monitor when they serve to the customer, how they serve it. When they prepare the, you know, because a few things, you know, go into semi-finished and then, you know, it's uh, getting, like, you know, your sandwiches and other thing, it's processed there. We want to see that whether this particular process is followed. And day end, whatever waste it is, it should not be sold to the customer. Uh, that also we want to monitor that getting destroyed, actually. This process, you know, all 60 outlets we connected online. And, uh, you know, people are monitoring it. Suppose if they are following it online, they are getting the, you know, feedback also. Uh, when we address, you know, we see, you know, sales going up. Because uh, the, with the hygiene, how they supply, and the number of people coming, customers coming in, you no, know, it's increased. This is one thing. Uh, this is a vegetarian, uh, you know, process, what I have shared with you. The another thing, you know, which I have seen... Now, will it be different for non-vegetarian? Yeah, yeah, I'll share with you that oh. also. One <laughs> Sunday morning uh, happened, you know, like, uh, normally in, uh, you know, in Chennai, that's what, you know, I see a practice. Like, non-vegetarian happens, you know, uh, cooking happens only on a Sunday every week, you know, that is the, you know. How many of you non-vegetarians? <laughs> yeah. Then I uh, will realize, no, suddenly I realized, okay, it, uh, so chicken now I have to buy, and then how this? No, if it happens, no, industrial, no, I had, uh, like, no, thought, and then I landed in a YouTube video. In a minute, some 75, uh, no, chickens are getting cut, and then, no, neatly packed, and then, no, this was the video I could see. Then how neatly it happens, no, all, everywhere it's sensor. Only cutting alone is manual. All of the things you know, if you see, right from you know, removing the feathers, all those things, you know, cutting into correct uh, sizes, all those things are happening, and grammage wise, you know, the irrigating, full, uh, no, off, all these Central things. Central, you know, today's trusty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was happening, and uh, no, I was really stunned uh, to see the way in which you know, it happens, you no, know, it's really uh, amazing. Even that uh, YouTube video is available. I thought no, everybody is silently listening. I was not uh, looking at anything. No, no, no. They are thinking whether today is Amavasya, Shasti, or something like that. That's why a lot of <laughs> hands have not gone. Okay. Yes. Anyway, that uh, interesting point what uh, Sindhil has uh, brought is um, see that how the automation helps. Okay. And basically, I mean, I would like to also throw open some experiences because most of you from uh, uh, manufacturing and uh, you would have also had a uh, lot of experiences in this particular area. This industry 4.0 is really a, really a buzzword or re do you really mean it? How many people say that you really mean this? You vouch by this industry 4.0. So feedback for IBM. Okay, they have to strategize there. Can I take a minute? Oh, one second. <laughs> Let them... You mean it means, okay, it is going to pay or it's something like one more. Uh, but actually it is not so. I mean, I'll give one example from my area. <coughs> See that uh, paint shop, one paint shop. Somebody was mentioning about that paint shop also one experience. The paint shop, the op, uh, transfer efficiency is very, very important, you know. See, when you do that the normal painting, you would have seen it in the garage and other things, you know, when they do the painting, what will be the transfer efficiency? Any idea? Any, any guess? It has to be interactive. Okay, you are all CIOs, no? Any guess? What will be the transfer efficiency? If you use one liter of petrol, I mean uh, paint, how much is going to the object? 70%. The industry is striving for reaching 70%. Actually, the transfer efficiency is only 28%. So rest of the things are all going to the atmosphere. On the face of the operator, or on the gloves of the operator, or on the apron of the operator, or on the walls of the shop. Okay? Only 28% is going to the object. And the paint is second most expensive item in the any automobile. Second most expensive item, much, much uh, cost. I mean, next to engine, that is the uh, painting and the finishing cost is uh, very, very. So, normally, you know that in the automated plant, the efficiency will be around the 55 percent. If you increase the efficiency from 55 percent to let us say 70 percent, the cost 
you know, per mod cycle itself will be reduced by as high as about 1000, 1200 rupees. That is the type of thing. Using this IoT, using that sensor, the robo will, will not move just like that. Based on the jig, okay, based on that item, the movement of robo is controlled, the object is sensed, and the movement of robo is controlled, and we could increase the efficiency from 55% to 68%. That is the jackpot which you can get it, okay using this particular IOT. Another example I will say, if you see that uh, 100 vehicles are manufactured, not all, though we try to be as standard, as standardized as is possible, not all the vehicles will give, let us say desired 70 kilometers per liter. Some vehicle will give 80, 85 kilometers per liter. Some vehicles will give only 60, 65, 50, 55, like that. Okay, given the road, given the same road condition, given the same driving pattern. Think of a situation, the ingredients which is contributing for that 80 kilometers per liter vehicles, the ingredients which are contributing for 60 kilometers per liter vehicle. If you are in a position to analyze and move the average towards 80, the job is done for the organization. Lifetime job is done by the IT people to the organization. This type of potential is available in using IoT and integrating IT into the manufacturing. This is what? This can tremendously change the entire pattern, the way in which the company is working. The people are all, why they are working, all those things can be transformed. It can be a disruptive technology also, we can make use of it. This is how the benefits are available. Please add something. Sir. <coughs> yeah, uh, you uh, clearly talked about process improvement or efficiency improvement using analytics. There are many, many use cases around that, specifically in automotive industry in terms of, I think, uh, some, uh, uh, some of the aspects were talked in the presentation. Uh, also, there is a lot of uh, usage of uh, IoT for new businesses. Uh, some clients in the room didn't talk about, uh, talk about it due to uh, uh, their own confidentiality, but there are some clients in India, like Maruti, who is talking about it uh, openly in terms of how they are uh, partnering with us and building a connected vehicle, which is likely to revolutionize a lot of things even in such a uh, you know, low margin or rather high volume, low cost models also, they are planning to do a few things which they are talking about openly, uh, which can bring in new revenue models uh, to them. Uh, as well as uh, some of the other industries like uh, textile and all, they are looking for innovation from different places. So uh, can you imagine a textile industry like Arvind partnering with IBM for innovation. So <coughs> there also their MD Sanjay Lalbhai has gone public and he has talked about this partnership and how IBM Research Labs is helping them in terms of uh, their textile processes. Adding on to few many other things like analytics, uh, other, other things, there are core innovation and all also people are looking at new models, new partners, that's the mantra going on. Very good. One day we can see that IBM is helping us in uh, wearing the appropriate uh, cotton shirt, depending upon the sweating pattern. I think we can expect that one also. With that, uh, my dear friends, um, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, patient hearing. And one more aspect which I have not covered, which I would like to cover it just uh, in a few lines. Uh, security is very, very important. See that uh, anything which is hacked, know that uh, if it is uh, ERP system, only the ERP system will get hacked. Or if you are using CRM, when it's, which is exposed to internet, if that is getting hacked, only the CRM system will get hacked and you will be losing your customer data and other things. But uh, more and more when we are using connected vehicles and uh, more and more we are using uh, connected shop floors and also manufacturing, which is all exposed to that one, security is very, very important in the sense that uh, uh, if anything happens, you know, your uh, drawings, your, uh, all your efforts, all those things are all, uh, uh, cannot be exposed to, uh, to the wrong hands. 
Therefore, security is also very, very important. It assumes much more stronger role, more than I can say financial institutions. With that, I call it a day. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Dundapani. Uh, so yes, I think it was a very interesting panel discussion, but I think the audience has kept very silent. So maybe we'll just give maybe a few minutes for the audience to ask questions. You've only been listening. Why don't we hear some questions from your side? The panel is here. I think the speakers are also there. So if you have any questions, please ask them now. Otherwise, we're not leaving the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner will not be so good. Okay. Yeah. Our cocktail will be cut. <laughs> No, anything if you want to share. Yeah, there's a there's somebody there. Can you please take the mic to him in the back? couple of examples I'll share with you. See, initially, uh, when we put in you know, systems in place for capturing your, uh, you know, uh, every production uh, data, there is a resistance from the people. It will be a general resistance. I'm telling you know, way back in the some uh, 15, He's asking back. promise versus execution. You, you focus on that. Okay. Promise? Uh, promise versus execution, no? Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Definitely execution ch challenges would be there because promise is given by somebody, execution is happening at the other side. Definitely there will be a challenges. That is where no IT role, uh, I see a, no, a greater role in that actually. Okay. He says that it will exist and the IT should, you should take care of it. Correct. Sir, once again, no, once yeah. again. he has to answer. Okay. <laughs> he has to. Yeah, this, uh, this is a challenge that has been faced uh, by many people in many projects. That's where uh, system integrators like us come into picture in terms of bringing that knowledge from other implementations, prepare some methodology, robust methodology that can be you know, used to reduce the risk. So the project management risk as well as the technology risk, these are all the things that are covered in, in such a methodology. That's what we bring to the table. So it's not a, a, a zero one answer, but yes, a lot of learning has gone into preparing this methodology. What you just are to, telling is right. Uh, one second. Uh, what you are telling is right. Uh, it's like a profile picture of yours in the Facebook versus actual picture. Okay, and also something similar to the, uh, the bridegroom's photo which is shown to you uh, before the marriage and uh, when you see her, okay? It's like that. But the, this challenge is all already there. But over a period of time, uh, you see, if you look at it, the percentage of uh, success of ERP in early 2000, you know, it used to be only less than 30%, less than 30%, the success rate of ERP implementation. But now it has, over a period of time, it has also improved. The demanding customers, they have also changed. And the service providers have also understand they cannot fool around uh, over a period of time, okay? And the heavy competition has also come because their stake is also involved. And the previously when the ERP failed that they will think that we have done something wrong. Okay, now they have started uh, exchanging also. The things have also improved. But it's, uh, let the buyer beware. There is a concept called, uh, uh, in the mercantile law, there is a concept called let the buyer beware. We have to be much more beware and demand and ask right questions. Okay. Sir. So these are new technologies. I specifically spoke about this gaining guts and confidence it works. Right. And that comes with a very strong methodology which Govin spoke about. So typically the way we are advising the clients are 
how do we give confidence is that take something called the minimum viable product or a minimum viable service okay if you say that show me something i don't want to wait for 6 months to see what is outcome so we are trying to explain more in terms of what you can see in 8 weeks as a first minimum viable product which actually gives you the confidence this new technology works and it has shown so i spoke about connect and collect okay while we have 50 machines in the floor at least show one machine and say that okay this data comes and i'm able to see the healthcare so those are the methodology standpoint scope how do we do it and agile as a practice what we do so these are the various ways to see that whatever the new technology is coming it is getting yeah. executed on non cloud very good <coughs> see pay as per use like that pay as you benefit will also come sometime okay don't worry yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's what i am telling pay as you benefit okay <laughs> any other thing sir as we are running short of time we'll take maybe one last question they yeah. save that one also yeah there is one question there <coughs> my question is with regards to the infrastructure side so we are from server and storage planning team uh, from the manufacturing end so we talked about the ibm power series basically so this question go to the to the speaker so power series we we are only talking about the the in memory processing and, and analytics that we are doing on the big data side what about the the um, plant floor uh, applications which which doesn't need in memory processing we are i'm talking about consolidating the complex infrastructure that we have like we have a separate storage we have a separate compute side so a lot of other oems are working on con consolidating those hardware into one single boxes is ibm doing something in that area to reduce the complexity and yeah. the technology refresh plans that we are facing issues into wonderful wonderful yeah <laughs> can come here yeah so with respect to that question so uh, the the majority workload which we focused here is hana which was in memory now uh, if I'm right, as far talking about a hyperconverged uh, system, okay. So I mean, uh, so uh, there are multiple type of workloads and there are multiple methodolog methodologies to address it, right? So, but you need to have the basic type first. You need to have the best performing systems in terms of your processing capability, in terms of your I/O bandwidth. After that, you build a solution around it. Say, for example, when you're talking about hyperconverged in, in uh, uh, infrastructure, so IBM has partnered with Nutanix to build a hyperconverged uh, infrastructure in place, which kind of brings in your compute, your storage, and your virtualization layer all together. It's like your traditional uh, uh, the Nutanix solution which is available on uh, x86. So wherein you don't have to get, uh, worry about compute separately, LAN network separately, SAN network separately, silos of storage and all. Everything is kind of software driven by Nutanix. And what is the be and underlying you have this powerful hardware architecture which kind of delivers that promise to you at the uh, presentation layer. You answer question? Does it answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, basically okay. it will reduce the complexity. Correct. Ah, correct. So, so right now, if you see, I mean, you have multiple administrators, right? Multiple administrators at multiple points. So with a hyperconverged solution uh, uh, powered by Nutanix plus power, you can just have one kind of one administrator who is kind of looking at this uh, workloads as a whole. But that again, you cannot bring in just pushing everything into Nutanix. So uh, this solution again is specific to few workloads. So it's always a tailored approach you have to give for workloads. Very good. conclude uh, this evening um, and thanks a lot for listening and you've been a great audience I'd like to thank all the panelists I think it's been a great discussion uh, before you go I would just like to give a small token of our appreciation I request Mr. Govind Rajan since CMR and IBM are the host to present a small token a memento to all the panelists
Thank you very much, gentlemen. It was a great session. I hope you all found it useful. Uh, do fill up the feedback forms. They're all there with you, I think. So, and please give them at the counter outside. And uh, I think I hope you got something from it. It was useful for you. Uh, so with that, we call it the day. And do join us over drinks and dinner. And thank you very much. Thank you.